In this video, I'm gonna talk about five mistakes that can kill your personal injury case. I'm gonna give some settlements and show you how these mistakes would have resulted in lower settlements. I'm attorney Justin Ziegler. The first mistake that can kill the value of your case is to believe what the adjuster tells you, specifically if the adjuster tells you the case is worth a certain amount to believe him. The adjuster's duty is to his insured. Oftentimes, you're making a claim against someone else who caused your accident the adjusters and the insurance companies insured is that person and it is that is not you. The adjuster or insurance company's duty is to that client, to act in good faith and protect that client if they can settle the case for that client without incurring the client additional exposure. Do not listen to what the insurance adjuster tells you about the value of the, your case they're often wrong. If you're making a claim against your own insurance company, such as uninsured motorist insurance, keep in mind that although they have a duty to act in good faith to you, the employee, the adjuster, is looking out for what's best for his company as well. An example of the first mistake about that you should not listen to what the insurance adjuster tells you your case is worth is, this is a motorcycle here. A motorcycle rider was riding straight. A truck made a left-hand turn in front of him. They collided. The motorcyclist had a tibial plateau fracture and had a rod inserted right there, which is the top of the lower knee. He ended up having surgery also to his finger. But the bottom line is the insurance adjuster initially said he had reserved the case at $100,000, meaning he felt the case was worth essentially no more than $100,000. But had my client, the motorcyclist, had listened to the insurance adjuster and believed that his case was worth $100,000, he would have settled for that amount and not the $445,000 that we ultimately settled for. The second mistake that you can make that would totally kill the value of your case is if you make a low settlement demand. In the example I just gave, the case settled for $445,000, thousand dollars. My opening demand was one million dollars, which happened to be the insurance policy limits of the careless driver. However, let's say I only demanded four hundred thousand dollars. That would have set the cap on the amount that the insurance company was going to pay me, and likely they try to pay you less than your settlement demand in most cases. So, the same is true if I would have demanded three hundred thousand. I would have set the cap at three hundred thousand. They would likely have paid me less than that. So, the fact that I made a high demand gave me room to negotiate the case down and we ultimately settled for $445,000. So do not make too low of a demand. The third mistake that you can do to blow your case is if an insurance company tells you that their client or their insured did nothing wrong and you just say, I don't wanna pursue my case anymore. It can be a very big mistake and I'm gonna give you an example of that in one second. This is the picture of a gentleman who was on the floor he was shopping at a supermarket, he walked and he turned a corner and he claimed that he slipped on a substance and he fell down. This is an actual photo that was taken immediately following his fall. He claimed that the fall aggravated or worsened his Achilles tendon tear, pre-existing tear that he had. The Achilles tendon is the back of the lower leg. It's a tendon that runs down essentially from uh, the back of your knee to your ankle. And essentially the supermarket there third party adjuster who handled the claim said, we deny liability, we did nothing wrong. Now, if he would have made the mistake of just saying, whoa, the supermarket's probably right, maybe they did do nothing wrong, he would have missed out on the ultimate $300,000 settlement that we ultimately achieved for him. So, mistake number three is just agreeing that the supermarket or wherever you're injured or whichever insurance company you're dealing with Mistake number three is just assuming that they are correct if they deny liability, they are often wrong. The fourth mistake that can kill the value of your case is to not look for all the available insurance coverage that's available. I'm gonna give you an example in a second about a pedestrian from another country who was in Miami, Florida. He rented a car while he was a pedestrian, another car struck him and he fractured his lower leg bone, which is the tibia. He had a rod inserted into the tibia. The other car that hit him, actually was a rental car as well, had $100,000 of liability insurance. That insurance company paid us the 100,000. When I asked my client if he had uninsured motorist insurance, he said, I didn't purchase any. Well, we wrote to the rental car company. He actually did purchase 100,000 of uninsured motorist cover insurance coverage, which is very rare, but they ultimately paid us the 100,000. So mistake number four for him would have been to not look for this additional insurance coverage. Likewise, I had a case where a woman fractured her wrist and she had a plate put in 
her wrist. And the at-fault driver uh, had $100,000 of insurance. USAA responded to our letter requesting their insurance information, saying they have $100,000. And it was only when I pressed USAA, they told me that the employer, her employer, the other driver's employer, caused the, the other driver caused the accident, had a $1 million policy with another insurance company. Had I not pressed them and looked for additional insurance coverage, we would have missed out on $100,000. The entire case settled for $200,000 Prior to getting money from the employer's insurance company, we had 100000 from USAA, so we were able to discover another $100,000. Now, that's just one example of discovering extra insurance coverage, but there can be loads of places where that extra insurance coverage may be hiding. The fifth mistake that can kill your personal injury case is to not get an expert if you need one. Certain types of cases, you need an expert to help prove your case. And without an expert, you can't even get your case to trial, meaning the judge will dismiss your case before it gets to trial. Some cases where you need an expert are, for example, if you slip and fall on stairs, you're gonna need an expert to say what was wrong with the stairs. Were the risers too long, too high? Were there improper handrails? Was the wrong paint used, etc.? Well, there was a claim where we, along with another law firm, represented a gentleman who ultimately had leg surgery and it settled for $195,000, but fortunately we got an expert and we got him out to the accident scene very quickly to inspect the stairs. Had we not have hired an expert, there's a chance the condo could have repainted the stairs or fixed the hand rails or essentially done other stuff to repair the stairs, and we would have had a difficult, if not impossible, time proving our case. Now experts cost money. If you hire an attorney, they normally advance the cost and then they're repaid at the end of their claim. But understand, there's certain cases you need an expert and without an expert you get zero. My name is Justin Ziegler of Jay-Z Helps, a Florida injury law firm. My office is in Miami and I serve Florida.